Welcome to On the Beat, the podcast that uncovers full frontal male nudity in cinema. Can I start again? It's right in the beginning. I guess. It's taking up all of our time. What? Jeez. So rude. I can't fucking believe it. Christ. It's just not very unfair. I'm going. Yeah, go for it then. Welcome to On the Beat, the podcast that uncovers full frontal male nudity in cinema. My name is Laura, and I am joined by my co-host Ryan. Hello. Ryan, are you so excited about October Horror Month? Ooh, it's very spooky in here. Ooh, there's spooky penises. The like fog's starting penis to bats. roll in. Yeah. Flying around. Little penis bats? Like if a penis had wings. Oh, don't know we saw this in Italy. That. Remember? Yeah, we did. I just don't know if I'm called a massive a tintinabulum. fan. A tintinabulum. Yeah, that's what they're called, and they're supposed huh. to ward away demons. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a massive fan of like them, like fluttering about the house. I love them. We're gonna make some for the house. Oh, okay. To keep us safe. <clears throat> Penis, protect me. Yes, yeah, so that's what they. That was their primary cause of 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 yeah. That's why they existed. Yeah. Yeah, I learned something. Speaking of demons, are you ready to talk about the 1980 horror film, Night of the Demon? Yes. Directed by James C. Wasson? Yes, I know of him. Do you? Yeah. What do you know of him? He made Night of the Demon. (laughs) (laughs) Wasn't a joke. I mean, that's true. He did do Night of the Demon. Anything else? No, no, this is his only film. <laughs> this is it, no. He hasn't got an illustrious career. Or at least if he's got an illustrious career, isn't it, in film? True. So I tried to find him on the internet, and I'm like, is he a doctor? And like, Yeah, you find a bunch of doctors. <laughs> like, I don't know, New York or something? I don't know where he lives. I mean, if I'm going to do a spiel, I could do a spiel about how this isn't the only film like with this title. There's a lot. Yeah, so... Some people, some cinephiles out there might be like, Ryan, why have you not mentioned the 1957 Jack Turner uh, classic horror movie? It's like, well, I'm just about to, fool. And it's... (laughs) Jesus. So so hostile right off. (laughs) Right off the bat. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Um, Oh, my God. Yeah, that film was called Night of the Demon. That's from 1957. And then there's the Night of the Demons. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've got the Night of the Demons trilogy from 88, 94, and 97. Probably more familiar with those. Yeah, I think they're more fun, if I remember, uh, than this one. But I mean, to be fair, this this Night of the Demon that we're going to be covering today is pretty bloody funny. Does this movie have a demon in it? It has something that acts very demonically. I don't know about that. In one way or another. There is, pagan, there is like pagan rituals and stuff like that in this movie as well. I know you might have forgotten that thing, but like they, they worship a deity, um, and there's a pagan ritual, and they are. Uh, when did that happen? Well, remember they were like the when they were camping and stuff, and then they came back and they were like, we we're like, oh, we noticed someone was getting raped, so we fired off a few rounds <laughs> to like scare them off. <laughs> yeah, and they were worshiping what we find out to be a Bigfoot. Deity. Bigfoot deity. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard those words together before. No, no. This is the angry Bigfoot movie. The one Bigfoot we've all been problem. waiting for. Well, Bigfoot's a problem, as I found out. Jesus. Yeah. To the point where in Oklahoma, they recently uh, introduced the Bigfoot hunting bill. Because obviously okay. he's an issue. So trying to boost tourism, basically you go there with your license and you can get... <laughs> your Bigfoot license. Your Bigfoot license. I mean, you need to have a license. You can't just shoot at randos. So like, you go out there and if you bring back the head of Bigfoot, you get $25,000 of, uh, of reward for capture. So I found a slightly different bit of information where they're filming a television show. And yeah, again, it's like a tourism thing. Okay. But the reward... Is three million dollars. That means it is a desperate situation. So Big you don't think the... it's just to boost ratings? 
No. You think it? You think there's a genuine problem? No, I think the FBI needs to drop what it's doing and they need to get their asses <laughs> over to Oklahoma and they need to get themselves get themselves this fucking problem sorted. People out. are scared. I'm terrified. Oh my gosh, Ryan! I'm like there's Bigfoot issues. There's a hundred and six. Well, there's a hundred and six Bigfoot sightings in Oklahoma since. Well, that was that was from a time to January 2021. So it 106. could have been like for, from all of time. I there's mean, been a total potentially. since Bigfoot. I mean, you said to me earlier, Bigfoot's only only really been a thing since like 58. Yeah, since 1958. Yeah. There was, and that is the earliest American recording of a Bigfoot sighting, I think. And it, it was a joke. No. Ryan, I don't think Bigfoot's real. And I'm starting to worry about you. But in 1958, someone had written into the Humboldt Times. You have no sense of wonder. <laughs> I come from Scotland. We have the Loch Ness Monster, so... That's true. Yeah. All you... Country of dreamers. Oh, all you skeptics and you Philistine. <laughs> well, uh, a logger from California wrote into the Humboldt Times saying As someone that- who deals with logs of wood. Yes. Yeah, logger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he wrote Not in like an edit saying, logger. A what? An edit logger. What's that? That's like some per log cut, that's some per cut and goes in there and writes down time codes for a living. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds like what I do with these dick movies. Yeah. I'm yeah. a dick logger. No, I just come in and tell jokes and watch movies and uh, <laughs> fuck off. I'm logging dicks. <laughs> yeah. All day, all night. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a sight to see. Anyway. Well, he had written in that he saw big footprints around his work site. Terrifying. And he said, <laughs> you know, he made like a joke about, oh, maybe we have an abominable snowman over here in Northern California. But what had actually happened, Ryan, it wasn't Bigfoot. I'm telling you. So you say. Okay. All right. <laughs> he, he had said he had told his family. He didn't tell anybody else. So after, and he kept the secret to his grave. His name's uh, Ray Wallace, I believe. Okay. And he told his family that he had made out of wood these big 16-inch footprints. Uh-huh. And he stamped them all around his work site okay. to play a joke on his coworker. And everyone thought it was funny. And apparently Ray Wallace was a hilarious prankster. And, but he didn't tell anybody. And he died. And his family told the papers. But then it had blown up to such gargantuan proportions that no one believed that it was fake Mm. they're like i don't know it's been too long someone's seen something because everyone ever since that day has seen you know not everyone but people claim to have seen things you know you're out in the woods hey look i'm gonna the story got bigger than him i'm gonna quote carlson who's in this movie where you don't poke fun at bigfoot okay you know he is bad news. I mean, this, what is it? Cryptozoology, right? And that's kind yeah. of the study of extinct or mythological characters or creatures. Yeah, made and up shit. It's still a thing. <laughs> it's still a thing today. You know, your Loch Ness Monsters, your Bigfoot. Yeah. You know. Um, There's nothing wrong with, like, diving into, like, the realms of imagination with this sort of stuff. I think that's fine. I think out of all of those tales, I think the Bigfoot saga is probably more plausible than, say, a, a, a giant dinosaur in the bottom of a lake. I don't know. I would more agree with water-based creatures because the ocean is so deep and dark. We don't go in there, you know? Like, we don't live in that world. Bigfoot lives yeah, I think in 70% our world. of the Earth's oceans is still unexplored exactly so yeah. why can't something be in there there was a story yeah. and i think it was like clearwater florida or sarasota or something where there was uh these tracks and i, I don't know if they were prints or tracks or something okay on the beach and this is like in the 70s or something mm-hmm. probably people like to make jokes and tell stories just like ray wallace and yeah. people are like there's a sea creature there's a sea creature and then you found out years and years and years later that it was this old man on the beach just like having fun and he made the same thing he made these big old feet mm. and he's and they're <laughs> the people are trying to like debunk the fact you know that it's real they're like there's no way and they try to figure out how these big feet would would get on the beach, but he told everyone how he did it, and you know the people thought there was an, an incredibly gigantic sea creature walking around in Florida. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, don't Wild. be scared. There's no Bigfoot. 
I'm not scared. I'm just like, in Florida. I'm just, no, I'm just about ready to knock down all you fucking naysayers out there. Just like, don't think it's a problem. So it's a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. Sorry, Oklahoma. Hey, you know look, what? at least they're putting some power in the hands of the people who can deal with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, just get a bunch of men with guns to just go out into the forest and just start shooting things that randomly. That sounds very safe. <laughs> it's worked out fine for plenty of people. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know that there is a there is a Bigfoot style creature in Florida? Oh. So I told you not to be scared, but maybe you should. We need to get a gun. <laughs> yeah, just get a gun. He's a swamp ape. I don't want a fucking thing coming to the front door. Swamp ape. And being like, no. It's coming for you. Terrify the dog. And then I've got to like deal with it as well. Yeah. I've got to like trap to lizards and all sorts of stuff. I'm not dealing with swamp ape. Yeah. What if he tries to get into my car? Yeah. Like, what's going to happen there? You're going to have to... Blow his you, fucking you head off. That's what lane. I'm going to have to do. I'm going to carpool with Swamp Ape. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've done that with plenty of relationships in my time. Ew. Uh, <laughs> uh, either way, like, oh, if shit. fucking George Henderson... Like, if Harry from Harry and the Hendersons... Oh, no, that's a Bigfoot movie. Yeah. Was anything like the Bigfoot in this movie, like, George Henderson would have to blow his fucking head off. Like You'd that's a that's a Bigfoot movie Harry. that'll night, make you Harry. cry. Yeah, be it John Lithgow or fucking Bruce Davison who who plays George in those those that movie in the TV show. I mean, everyone should know John Lithgow from the film Raising Cain. Yeah, or a <laughs> Cliffhanger. Um, yes, where he's got that yes. accent. Yes. Yeah. Love um, him. But yeah, no. I mean, if Harry was anything like like this Bigfoot is. Um, no, oh, I have to deal with it. Get animal control out or something. Like you'd have to deal with it. You have to put him like, down. You've got to put him down. Yeah, he's around your kids. It's a you dangerous know? animal. Fuck yeah! Like there's this this bigfoot fucking kills two Girl Scouts who are running around with kitchen knives in the woods, and uh, forces them to stab each other. <laughs> he like puts their hand mm-hmm. right in the, the other person's hand, and they're just like stabbing each other side by side. Yeah. Like, oh no. We've all been there where you've taken a small child and you're like, stop punching yourself. Except with him, it's stop stabbing yourself. Yes. Oh yeah. my god. Aye. Yeah. And it, it can be only happens. it could be only one one logical reason as to what happened there is Bigfoot did this. So obviously when the authorities saw it, they were just like, This is Bigfoot's doing. The only way you know a Bigfoot's been there is if you see a Bigfoot footprint. Yeah. That's how yeah. you know. That's Aye. his mark. Well, it's either that or it's Sideshow Bob. Like a really big shit. <laughs> Just like Joe Bob. Yeah. Right, yeah, Joe but Bob. he wears the shoes, though, so it's different. Bigfoot doesn't wear shoes. So, like, if Bigfoot wore shoes, he would be like Sideshow side Bob. Yeah, but Sideshow Bob didn't have to wear shoes all the time. He didn't wear shoes in bed. You know, he could walk around the woods if he wanted to. Okay. With his big feet. So now we know. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma either has a Sideshow Bob problem, yeah. an animated character. You know what Cowboy Curtis used to say in the Pee Wee show? What? Used to say, big feet, big boots. That's what he used to say. Oh. Yeah. Because obviously everyone attributes big feet to having, potentially having big dick. But yeah. obviously it's a kid's show. You can't say things like that. You're not going to get Lawrence Fishburne saying that, like squirting that out in like Pee Wee's Playhouse. That show's <laughs> already a little squirting bit. Squirting <laughs> out in Pee Wee's Playhouse. That's what you just said. <laughs> yeah, whoever was playing Pee Wee, I mean, he's a weirdo. Pee Wee's Pee-wee's Kill House. That's what it looks like. It looks like fucking... Kill house. Yeah, it looks fucking weird. Paul Rubens. Yeah. Nah. I guess we can continue onwards. Okay. But, we don't need uh, to talk about Paul Rubens masturbating in a theater. That's fine. Everyone knows that story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, would you like to hear the synopsis of this movie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't come as any surprise what this is about, but... Okay. Uh, A professor and his students have a grisly encounter with a Sasquatch-like creature that prowls the backwoods. Hmm. Basically, all it needs to be a synopsis of is is three words, and it's angry Bigfoot. That's all it is. That's two words. What? No, it's Bigfoot. Bigfoot's not one word, It's a title. Bigfoot's a title. All right, well, two words. So be the angry Bigfoot. God, now I just feel like (laughs) a fucking An angry Bigfoot. An angry, the angry Bigfoot movie. Is there any other Bigfoot? Is there any other angry? (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> is there any other like angry Bigfoot movies? I have looked up different Bigfoot movies, and I think the most popular is obviously Harry and the Hendersons, and yeah, there's like, other ones the that have come out. Bigfoot. The guys, the guy, Weird whoever made uh, Blair Witch Project did a Bigfoot movie too. Oh, okay. I didn't see it. No. Didn't no. see it. All right, okay. So, Either yeah. Way. I mean, it's a movie where there's an anthropology professor who meets someone whose father, who they, they believe that her father was killed by Bigfoot. Yeah. So they take her, I believe, she goes on the trip, they take all the students, anthropology students on a field trip. Yeah, she explains in this convoluted manner, there's a picture of the Bigfoot in the newspaper, but from a few viewings, like, I couldn't understand if what it was, because I tried to recreate the newspaper for this. Oh, the the newspaper clipping of the murder, like, the murder victim, so, like, her father was in the newspaper. (laughs) Yeah, and the other picture was so dark, I had no idea what it was, until eventually it was explained to me, oh, no, it's the... It's a photo of the Bigfoot Bigfoot. So it's like a, like there's a little ruler next to it for, for some scale. But uh the pro like she explains like we can't prove it because they took the photo and then the negative disappeared. <gasps> Fucking shady fuckers. Wow. Fucking police coming in, they're just like, nah, it's like it's too much of a problem. Don't want to scare the public. See, it's terrifying. Absolutely fucking terrifying. Calm down. So scared. Calm down. But uh, here's the tagline, though. An evil mutation embarks on a wave of brutal butchery. It's not a lie. It's also like a synopsis. Yeah. <laughs> not it's really not, a tagline. Yeah, tagline would be like, Bigfoot cometh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Angry Bigfoot wants to be your friend, not, you know, like that. <laughs> Hold on to your dicks. He's coming for you. Hold on to your you. dicks. Yeah. He's going to rip your dick off. Don't sleep in a sleeping yeah. bag in the middle of the day. <laughs> yeah. He is. He is. Yeah. He's coming to get you. Coming like indeed. Like. He's coming to get you. Yikes. No, don't say that like that. It's like, disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I like that opening sequence, like where they, you you see the blood go into his Bigfoot, his Bigfoot tramp. Yeah, he it's... murders a guy, and then the blood pools into the Bigfoot. Yeah, footprint. rips the rips the dude's ha- arm off. Yeah, it does. Yes, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it's like the probably the best bit in the movie is when the blood goes into his Bigfoot and it fills up, and then the title comes up over it. Yeah, and you're like, wow, it's really inventive. And then it's all downhill from there. <laughs> well, a lot of the heavy lifting is done in the music, I find. That the music, elevator music? The elevator music. The Dennis McCarthy music for Night of the Demon. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's... I have him to blame for the pain in my ears. Probably. I mean, you might be able to get like a, like a dat disc or something that maybe has the Night of the Demon uh, soundtrack available for us to listen to at some point. No. I mean, where we watch this movie... The quality of it's really bad, and we watched it on YouTube. It is free on YouTube. Um, yeah, I don't think for how long? A... Probably forever, because no one. That's the other place where we saw this. it <laughs> at least two years ago when I first watched the movie with you. Yeah, because we've seen it at least twice. You over say the span that, of our life. yet I don't remember it at all. Put it this way: we watched it this time, and there's stuff that happens that I completely forgot about, and you'd be like, Ryan, why did you forget about that? And it just seemed to happen. So, you know. Uh, there's only so much we can store in our brains, but now after seeing this, I have no this, room for any of this in my brain. Of the big for this foot, one part, the Bigfoot endemic that seems to be seems to be raging across the United States. <laughs> really, like I think I think James was onto something when he made this movie. He just needs to, we just need to know. The world just Man, needs to know. You're not gonna sleep tonight, are you? I mean, do I sleep just in general? Like usually, I'm terrified of something. <laughs> so. So yeah, a lot of the heavy lifting is done with the music, and yeah, we get to see we get to see the footage that kicks it all off, kicks off this adventure. The scary Bigfoot footage. Yeah. Big so basically, footage. yeah, basically, it's like a it's like your poor man's version of the of the Patterson footage, um, which everybody knows about. What is that? Let's, what do you mean everybody knows about it? What are you talking about? It's the footage of the Bigfoot in the woods. That footage. Patterson footage. Does someone named Patterson film it? That's usually how it is. Like, you know, the right. Zabruder film? It was shot by a dude called Zabruder. Okay. You know, JFK. Do you not know your history? Jesus. No. Right, anyway. I don't so, want to watch that film again. It's too long. What, JFK? Yeah. Or the Zabruder film, which is maybe maybe less than a minute. 
<laughs> oh, is that the one with the shot? Back and to the left. Back and yeah. to the left, yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, they're watching it, and I think he sh- like the Bigfoot shows up, and he's just, it's obviously a man in a hairy suit. Everyone's like, oh, God. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's Bigfoot. Yikes. Yeah, as opposed to, that's the jo- that's a joke store. That's a joke store costume. <laughs> it's definitive proof, Ryan. Yeah. There's a lot of very stilted performances in this movie. Now, does that mean it's bad? No. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, this is a flashback movie as well. It starts in the hospital room with the professor who's been mangled. And he goes to tell the story of why, how he came to be in this position. His whole face was burned yes. off. He is reminded just Except before he tells totally this. Fine. Well, he believes it all to be true, and you know what? I am inclined he was to believe there. him. He was there. Well, of course, he's, he got all fucked up. Why is he going to lie? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He didn't burn his own face you off. Know, there was five different victims. There's a demon who's very creative. This demon that we refer to is is a bigfoot. We find out is a bigfoot. Um, well, yeah, and the I didn't even bring this up. The original title of this film was Re- The Revenge of the Bigfoot. Yeah, a much more apt and fitting title. Yeah, they only changed it because the Bigfoot craze started to like fall off in the in the 70s. So they changed it to Night of the Demon. Yeah, that's when problems start. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, that's when problems start. When people start to forget what what's going to happen to them. <laughs> forget their roots. Yeah. Either way, either way, we get this we get this fantastic scene in the hospital. Really, really solid performances. Oh, God. And the doctor goes, uh, it would help if you just started at the beginning. Fair enough. Yeah. Because he needs instruction. I'm like, fuck yeah. It's like, might as well just come up with a title of story beginning now. You know, just in case you were in any way, shape, or form confused as to what was happening. This isn't a Monty Python film, so we don't need that. No. I mean, it's probably about as funny. But, uh... (laughs) Doubtful. There's the sex in the van. That sex scene. Lip smacking sex. Is vile. The wet lip smacking sex. It's wet. Don't do it. Don't. Wet. Stop it. Oh my God. Everyone's going to turn this podcast off because it's fucking gross. Mm. Wet mouth sounds. Yeah. And like nipple kisses and. A lot of titty sucking. Like. They are making wet mouth sounds Mm -hmm. that sound like they're eating a big old bowl of spaghetti marinara. Yeah, spaghetti night in the van. Slurping spaghetti in the van. Yeah. Oh, it's so gross, and they're horrible. It's like the sound effects they use in uh, Bad Taste. But they're used they're used for like comedy value. And that films that films like if we're gonna if we're gonna be realistic here. I did give Night of the Demon five stars, but I mean Bad Taste is obviously you objectively a, a, a far better film. Um, well, yeah, but uh, this is a joke. Five stars. Yeah, they're having but, sex in the van. Yeah, it's it, the no, I can't stand wet mouth sounds. It's so gross to me. Yeah, and they're moaning, and, and their like moans are weird, and they go yeah. on for a really long time. We we'll find and, that every single moment in this movie uh, tends to go on for an incredibly uh, long amount of time. Uh, Ooh. 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 <laughs> and it's like right, okay. <laughs> And then obviously that's with like all the very wet the, lip smacking. I had to turn the TV down. I'm just laughing like, oh, gross. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. But, but yeah. then they see something at the fucking window. Uh-oh. You hear, and then... You hear that Bigfoot noise. <laughs> okay. And you just know, you know Angry Bastard is turning up. He's going to kill something. That soundtrack... And that Bigfoot noise, I swear to God, it's like Lloyd Christmas, Dumb and Dumber, the most annoying sound in the world. Why isn't anything like that repeated in any other films? Like those sorts of music cues. Those horrible noises that hurt your ears. I mean, you know he's coming when you hear it. I mean, it also also means there's no tension. No. But also, I mean, you know he's coming. Well, you know there's going to be a creative way in which he kills someone. That's true. Um, Never kill the same way twice. Yeah. I mean, we get, we're in the van. Nothing really kind of... It's not very creative. No. He just takes the naked man out of the van and she's... No penis. She's screaming. Yeah, this isn't the dick scene. No. We'll, we'll tell you when we get there. You yeah, fucking... Hold you horses. hold your horses. Um, <laughs> we... He gets pulled out and then he's he's on the windscreen for, I don't know, 20 minutes? 20, 25, yeah. 30 minutes. <laughs> like, as he kind of bleeds out. Um, and she's like... <gasps> 
<sighs> She's screaming, <sighs> breathing very deeply. <sighs> yeah, there are a lot of screaming. A lot of screaming. Whoever did the yeah, obviously whoever did the sound mix needs to figure out that there's there's very quiet bits of this film, and there's very noisy bits of this film, and they need they need to equalize it out. Well, remember, they never work again, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I think that's a real shame. There should have been a sequel to this film. Jesus. Yeah, they could have called it Night of the Demons or Night of the Demon Two. Night of the Demons Three. Yeah, they could they could have done a whole son lot. of demon. Yeah. <laughs> There, um, the other uh, death that I really liked, I think it was like almost right after this, is where I, the timing of the movie and the timeline is super confusing, and I don't know when is when. Well, it's a flashback, but it might be a flashback within a flashback. The whole movie is a flashback, but there is also flashbacks within the flashback. Because all I remember is that, and I know there's other characters that pop up and arrive, but like they end up in sleeping bags. And it's nighttime, but then Bigfoot shows up, and it's daytime. Yeah. And <laughs> Bigfoot comes up, and you hear that horrible noise, and he does. Is it, is it just one person in a sleeping bag, or is it two people? It's a weird scene, and I—I I mean, I'm glad I'm able to bring this up. But he's this guy is just sleeping in a field, not even in the woods. It looks like it's in a field, and yeah. he's had a. There's a fire. There's no tent. He's just sat. He's just laying on the ground with a sleeping bag on him. And it's like he's tucked himself in real good, he's too. He's doing his best to pretend he was asleep. But he's... Acting. He's... Yeah, he's not very good. And then, <laughs> for whatever reason, this is pre Kane Hodder, like, Jason Voorhees that we're seeing here, where Bigfoot, right. Bigfoot picks up the sleeping bag and just starts swinging the fucking thing around. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> And then chucks them onto some, and impales them on a on a branch. Yeah, like upside down, impales them on a branch, mm -hmm. and he's just bleeding out. He's like, Aah. again, his death goes on. The deaths go on for a very long time. Yeah, they really um, hold on that death face. Yeah, and it's it's not that he's upside down and they're pouring blood. <laughs> like obviously he's been impaled in the chest, and the blood is going like you can see it's going in his nose. Yeah, and it's like there, and it's just like no. Nah. Like, there's probably a reason why he didn't work again. What did they use in Evil Dead? Didn't they use, like, caro syrup? Is that what it yeah. was called? And then they, they colored it, and it was that horrible, sticky substance. Yeah. I wonder what they used for this movie. I mean, it looks like, it looks like fucking Kool-Aid. It's thick. Kind of, but it's got that kind of, like, very kind of light, light look to it all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the guy in the sleeping bag dies, but seemingly during the day, and we're back to night when everyone's camped because it's blue. So it's like day or night, day night, right? Night, day night. Yeah, <laughs> he goes um, to sleep in the night. Yeah, so obviously they weren't able to get the shoot it during the night, or it was too much. Anyway, the big blue filter. <laughs> either way, either way, they start asking the local town. They go to Herb's General Store. And start asking like the locals okay. about the Bigfoot and like who to talk to and stuff like that. And seemingly there's this woman that they've all dubbed Crazy Wanda oh. who knows everything and about the Bigfoot. Okay. And she's been rendered mute because of pregnancy. Interesting. Yeah. She had a traumatic pregnancy and now... She's still pregnant? No. Well, I'm sure the pregnancy came to... It's obvious conclusion. Okay. okay. Um, but people are talking about her, and obviously no one's very nice referring to her as Crazy Wanda. Small town living. But anyway, uh, <laughs> there's this one scene where they're like talking to a teacher. I'm assuming it's a teacher. The soundtrack's like at a school, and the scene opens like, and it's on the other side of a chain link fence, and this ball hits the chain link fence. So you think it's at a school, right? And they're all playing, and they're talking to this teacher, and Basically, the teacher who they're talking to refers to the baby as a mongoloid Jesus baby. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's like, that's why they had nurse. to get rid of it. <laughs> I thought she was a nurse. Well, either way, it's still kind of fucked up, even if she's a nurse or a teacher. That's true. Probably shouldn't be using the term. But anyway. Eh, um, 70s. Yes. Yes. No one has so, any feelings. <laughs> no. No. But what we soon find out is this group... They're already in Bigfoot territory, you oh know? Oh, my God. They are fucking in the land of the angry bastard. Oh, no. Big bad bastard. So, 
they tell us well the professor who also tells us all the stories basically yes, tells he's us every narrator. single every single flashback uh every single memoir every single memory uh because he reads he gets all these stories from the paper obviously so then why does he have to tell us these stories doesn't everyone know the story i don't know because he's obsessed with it all he's obsessed with just like the bigfoot mythos it seems like mm. yeah i guess i don't know i mean if you I mean, if you spend your life dedicated in a career to believing shit that's made up, I don't know. I'm not too sure. But he's an anthropology professor. Like, that has grounding in science and fact. So oh. why he's all of a sudden obsessed with, like, a fucking yeah. Bigfoot is weird. Yeah. Well, thank fuck he's not a priest. Let's put it that way. So, <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> we're now We're now 30 minutes into this movie, so we're now at... The dick scene. Yes. There's, he refers to the... Yeah, he's got, he says he has this story about that biker. That biker dude. Yeah. That biker dude that is riding along a mountainside, but it mm-hmm. looks like he's just going in right turns, you said? You know what the biker looks like? He looks like the cartoon version of... Uh, remember the hunter, the dad from Jumanji? Oh. Yeah. That's what he okay. looks like. He's got like, he's got like, like, like kind of monstrous mustache kind of going on. I feel like he looks like a lot of bartenders in Orlando. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of bartenders in Orlando, but yeah. Um, yeah, so he's driving uh, in right turns for so long that he has to take a whiz. So basically, yeah, they, he's, there's like four exhaustive shots of the, the bike on the road. All wide shots where he all seem he seems to just be taking nothing but a right turn, like the entire time. And if it's four shots, then he has to find himself going in a perfect circle. Yeah. So, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I spin around a little bit too fast, I need to go to the toilet. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So. When he parks up, he pulls out, which I wasn't sure if it was like a joint or like a stubbed out cigarette, like a half mm. cigarette. It looked like a joint, though. And it was a 70, so I'm going to think it was a joint. He was holding it like a joint, you know? Not that this is anything that I'm like particularly proud of, but if you can't finish a cigarette at some point, you can sometimes put it back in the pack. Get it later. Ew. It stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Smelly. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, of course yeah. it is. Um, but he goes over and it doesn't even look like he's walking over to a bush, but he walks over. Well, he's parked the bike on what looks like a general footpath. In the, in, not even necessarily not really the, in woods. the woods, but like on the outskirts it's definitely of Definitely not woods. on a street. No, he was on roads and now he's ended up on what is probably a general footpath. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes to do a tinkle. He does. And it is instantaneous. Yeah. He basically gets his dick out to piss and the bushes part. They separate. They separate right Mm -hmm. in front of his dick. And then so as the bushes separate, you know, Mm -hmm. which is obviously Bigfoot. Yeah. Going like (laughs) peekaboo. I see your penis. And the guy is so startled, and he's standing there, like, not holding his dick. His dick is just there, like, through the fly of his jeans. Yeah, because I wondered that. Like, he's not, like, just pulled it out and then just let it run free to do its urination. No, because I feel like if you're peeing and you get startled, you maybe are still holding your penis. Right? Like, imagine it. I mean, maybe. I mean, I'd like to think he was. Like, he you're didn't doing just a pee-pee right now. pull it out, and he's just, like, doing a pee-pee. Like, you're, like, like... Like you're arched your back, you yeah. know, and you're just like letting it fly free. And just <laughs> letting much, it pee-pee. yeah. And that's what I was like. Maybe that's what he was doing. Okay. Yeah. But I want you to think about it, Ryan. So you're in, you just got off your motorcycle. Okay. You yeah. You a little puff puff. You're going to take a whiz. Mm-hmm. Like. About to have the trip in my life. You're holding your wiener. Mm-hmm. And Bigfoot comes. <gasps> yeah. And he startles you. Like, did you let go of your penis in that, in that. Potentially, but I mean, I'm certainly not standing completely still at the side of where I am. Like, you're so startled like, and shocked. Yeah, like clutching at pearls, just like, like, no, you know. Yeah, he's just standing there with his 
wiener Wander. just hanging out yeah. and he's not holding it. He's looking at Bigfoot. I don't think Big you foot's... even see Bigfoot. At you this see moment. his hand. You see his, his arm. hairy arms. Yeah, he sees his uh, arm. But what happens is Bigfoot grabs this biker's dick. Yeah, so if you ever thought you'd never hear a detailed breakdown of a biker getting his dick ripped off, well, here it comes. He lifts the biker up by his dick, seemingly, because his feet, the biker's feet, leave the ground. Yes. And, like, you don't really see anything except drops of blood <laughs> hitting the grass. Yeah. And then, I mean, it is wild. Mm. It is wild because I, I rewound it three times to watch it. And he literally lifts this guy up by his dick. Oh, shit. Right. Okay. Because, like, right Bigfoot ground. gets a right good handful. Oh, he really does. Yeah. And, like, I can, I can see why Bigfoot would be mad. Like, you're in your house, maybe. Like your home, your forest is your home, and some guy just whips his wang out Pisses and tries, on your tries face. to pee on you. Yeah, you'd be really mad, and he's already a very angry creature. Bigfoot has some obvious anger management problems, right? And so instead of saying, "Hey, man, try not to piss on me," he's like, <laughs> "Rip your dick off." <laughs> yeah, I'm rip your dick off. I mean, this is maybe how things work out in the animal kingdom. Like, you just, you gotta just get put in your place. I mean, I was working in Virginia last week and I saw a cow piss on another cow and the cow put his head right in the pee. Hmm. No dicks got ripped. Okay. No one got angry. They're all, they're all, the ones, they're all ladies though. The cows. Yeah. There's no, they're not gonna be any I guess you can't rip a lady dick off, but there was no anger there between the. Well, maybe that's just women don't get so mad. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe men just have. Do you have find anger that issues. happens like quite a bit? Is that what happens in the ladies' toilets? Is like, look, just punch each other in the vagina. Like, Shut up! I'm just gonna piss on your face. It's like, oh, okay. No, sorry. no, that doesn't typically happen. We Angry usually just Margaret. give each other like advice on love and makeup and fashion. That's what happens in the ladies' toilets. Really? Yeah. You know, you're being dead serious, right? I'm, I am being dead serious. Oh, okay. You make a lot of friends when you're drunk in a toilet at a bar. Huh. You know? Yeah. They don't last forever. Yeah, you don't really do that in the male toilets. It's like, you know, you're not going to go to a urinal and then start having a chat. It's like, you're looking at my dick, bro. Usually when you're washing your hands, not when you're yeah. actually, like, actively toileting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But pretty... no, I don't, and I also don't feel like there's a lot of anger and, like, pulling each other's dicks off, like, ripping them off in the men's toilet either. No, I've not had that issue. But for the most part, I don't I don't use a urinal. I use a, use a cubicle. Like your Instead. privacy, I like my privacy. Plus, I remember I remember uh, being attacked in toilets before, so I never really liked using the urinal. So, it always made me a little bit self conscious. Jesus Christ! Yeah, so I just go into the. Are you okay? Balls. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I assume either the biker's dick is fully detached from his body, mm. and you don't see the biker fall to the ground or anything, all you see. Is him, there's blood everywhere, <laughs> blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the biker is just clutching at his just dripping. Yeah, and he's stumbling area. towards the camera. And he's uh, like grabbing oh, at no. the patch where I assumed oh, his dick would be. God, but I thought there was oh, something no. there, like it was like fleshy bits. It or looked something. like this little fleshy tube that yeah. he was like holding on to. So yeah. like it was it like. It wasn't a full clean rip. No, it wasn't. It looks. <laughs> it looks. I was like, oh rough. no, it looks like there's bits. But he's just like stumbling towards everywhere. the camera. He's going towards his bite. He's like, oh no. And again, like everything in this movie, it just lasts a little bit too long. Way too long. Oh, God, and then he's up no. next to his motorcycle, and um, it looks like he's just like, it looks like he's. There's just blood dripping on the motorcycle. Just like, is he still peeing blood? Peeing blood? Yeah, pissing blood like he still all over really the motorcycle. Had to pee. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It's yeah. all in all about seven shots or something. It's way too many. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was. It was really funny. It was something I hadn't seen before, so mm. I appreciated that. But the professor was telling us after that scene, he's like, "Did any blood out? Blood to death, right? Blood to death from he's like blood to death from his injuries. It was obvious it was Bigfoot. Definitely, definitely Bigfoot. Could not have been anything else. Like I had never to be found Bigfoot. the penis. They never found the penis. <laughs> and then obviously he's told him the story, and he's just like, "Well, let's get some sleep." <laughs> 
remember nothing from the rest of this film. Like, there's a couple, like, smatterings of, of things I remember, but there's as There's also, as like, that obvious, some obvious over, quality issues with watching it at, like, 320p on YouTube <laughs> is the fact there's a lot of stuff that's very dark. So there's a, there is a lot of that sort of stuff. I mean, one of the things that's, that's too dark to see is obviously the flashback such a weird thing to say but it's his flashback of another story being told from another character's perspective it's also a flashback <laughs> where obviously crazy wanda the reason wanda goes crazy is because she she has sex with bigfoot no you walked out i was watching this movie today and you walk out and it's like oh bigfoot's shagging crazy wanda <laughs> and i go ryan i do hope you know that that's called rape <laughs> <laughs> Like, this isn't, like, sexy Bigfoot. It's not, like, a Shape of Water situation where you've got, like, a sexy creature from the Black Lagoon type of thing where mm. he's got a great ass and we still don't know how his penis works. Like, okay. no, this is a psychotic creature from the woods mm. that is raping this poor woman, mm. <laughs> like, seemingly all the time. Like, it seems like it's happened a lot. Like... I don't know if that was the first time it happened, but it seemed like it happens all the time. Where well, he's Bigfoot always... was bringing her gifts. Was he? Yeah. It did I mean, in terms, not seem consensual. In terms oh, okay, of, I'm sorry. Oh, no, hold I mean, on. in let terms me just, of her being, in terms specify, of her, like, me... having, finding ourselves in situations that are relatively compromising. Let me clarify here uh -huh. that by bringing gifts to someone that does not constitute consent, I just need to clarify that. Just because a gift doesn't mean I want to have sex with anybody. That was and more neither... a literal thing. Like, Bigfoot does bring her gifts. No, that's fine. Yeah. I just made... It just sounded for a second. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, he brought her gifts. No, 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 no. He still rapes her. She's fucking screaming. I mean, there's a... The first time And he... daddy and daddy, creepy old man's watching from the porch. And I swear to God, he says, like, oh, you deserve it, you horrible creature. Yeah, he's like, very religious. He's very Christian. It's like, yeah. this isn't her choice. Oh my god, it was horrible. And it went on once again way too long. It did go on too long and it was and also it was very, very loud. Yeah, it was also very dark. Which is fine. Yeah. Which is fine. But yeah. like, good god. But Wanda, Wanda, this movie. Wanda is definitely in situations where, you know, there are compromising i suppose <laughs> you know Jigger. one of my favorite bits in it and i'm not saying that this is this is a nice thing that happens but like the father like is beating her uh, in her story Ugh, and God. you know beating her because she likes a boy whatever mm. right and he, he just starts sharing i'm saving your soul you ungrateful bitch <laughs> <laughs> I think that was bloody funny. He's a gross dad. Yeah, he's awful. Bad he's like, dad. yeah, he's like the, he's like the, like the father in the Texas Chainsaw movies. Not, not anywhere near as good. But he's like the one. He's the oldest one. The step below, like actual grandpa, does all the hammering. Yeah. Yeah. Get her head in the bucket, you know, and it's like that shit. So you know. Oh god. Mm -hmm. The whole end of this movie is a complete slow-mo murder fest. It's which pretty awesome. I actually did not hate at yeah. all. I kind of liked it. Like, he was choking this girl out, and her head's, like, swinging back and forth. Her hair looked really good. Mm -hmm. And there's just blood coming out of her mouth. Um, does someone get impaled with, like, a pitchfork? Yes. Through the back? So someone gets impaled with a pitchfork, a throat gets slit. This, like, this Sasquatch, this Bigfoot, very ingenious when it comes to like he uses everything at his disposal because you would think he would just like go up to someone and like just crush their fucking head and then yeah. that would be the end of it you know what i mean yeah but he doesn't he just no. uses all these tools yeah uh oh god leave me alone leave me alone <laughs> oh my god leave me alone and he burns his fucking face on the stove yeah yeah no one is safe no one's safe from his clutches. Even crazy Wanda like burned. I mean, burned mm -hmm. her father alive. There is a genuine sense of fear from the people in the story. That's when they become a little bit more convincing. You like know. in the slow mo parts, where they I can guess. definitely get out of the house. Like I don't know how fast Bigfoot is. I don't know if he's ever been clocked. Mm. But I don't feel like he would be particularly swift. I mean, to be fair, that's maybe why it was shot in slow motion. Otherwise, you would never see what was happening. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? What, because he's so fast? Yeah, maybe he's a swift fucker. Like, he just kind of goes in there and he's just he's got like, long legs, I guess. He's like, what happened? Where is he? He's like, oh, Big no, strides. I've got a pitchfork in my back. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> and I'm still not sure what happened to the Bigfoot baby. There's some sort of intimation. Well, yeah, because she's had sex with Bigfoot. The there's She gives birth to a, a human Bigfoot hybrid baby. Right. Yeah, so um, I'm assuming, because the father's like, I killed the baby. And uh, there's the, uh, the, they dig up the grave and find it's not there. So I'm assuming he kind of just let the baby go. Or Bigfoot took the baby. Okay. Or the baby that's now going around, like, murdering is, is like, that's the baby. I'm not sure of the timeline. It's a bit wibbly-wobbly, obviously. Well, who so, knows how quickly these big feet, their big foot, um, big foots, <laughs> big foots, like, grow. Like, how quickly they do. I have no idea. You know, but, could be anything. But, yeah, she she said she set her father on fire to because he killed her baby and to protect... Bigfoot, baby daddy. You know, I like that when they get up to Wanda's door, who someone who doesn't speak, who's like, we know doesn't talk. And they're like, do you mind if we come in to have a talk? And it's like, well, she's not going to fucking say anything, is she? I feel like they're grabbing her all the time, and she's just always screaming. This is also... This is also she's so traumatized. Yeah, this is also 1979, though. You know, this is also the same movie where they only bring the women to the campsite so that they can do all the cooking and cleaning. Oh, yeah. So they say that in the movie. The only reason they brought her was so she'd do the dishes. Yeah. And she's like, okay. <laughs> no problem, chaps. Yeah. Subservient. So. Um, Indeed. Yeah. Why are those Girl Scouts running through the woods with, like, kitchen knives? I ha- <laughs> That's my thing. I didn't understand that was ha- like I didn't realize that was happening. I don't think in Girl happening. Scouts you get knives. You do in Boy Scouts. You get those little. But they weren't uh, pen knives though. You don't like. You don't I'm just, just trying go to, to your connect it with something. Oh, that would make okay. Sense. Trying to make sense. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. They wouldn't let me in the Girl Scouts, so I don't know if you get knives or not. Oh okay, okay. Yeah, but you um, did, did you go to one of those camps? Used Boy to be camps? in something called the Boys Brigade. Oh right. Because that's the which fucking was, cutest name ever. Which was to do with the RNLI, which was more to do with uh, like uh, the lifeguards. Oh. Yeah, the boys' brigade, if I remember. That's cute. Yeah, I mean it's ironic though because like I'm terrified of deep water, so like it wouldn't, it just wouldn't have, it wouldn't have led to anything other than me like like finding a dark corner to cry in. But uh, <laughs> like there wouldn't have been, Sorry. yeah, there wouldn't have been anything. Um, Did you get a knife? No, I was there. I think I went once. Oh. And that was it. Yeah, it was one of those. It was a one and done thing. Kind of like James Wasson with this movie. That's... Quality over quantity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you kind of sum the movie up. Like, it's poor, poor vagrant woman ends up having sex with an animal. That's not what happened. It was rape. <laughs> it was rape, Ryan. <laughs> There is controversy with this movie. I'm not sure if you have heard about this. No. But um, it was actually deemed and listed as a quote unquote video nasty. Yeah. Um, by the British Board of Film Classification. That makes sense. Yeah. So um, if you don't know what that term means, it's look it up. <laughs> I mean, I could tell them. I mean, you could name you could name like a like a few things that you could deem to be a video nasty. Like, what would you think? What's the first thing that comes to your head when you think video nasty? Well, I don't know. I just think about like really gory films. I can't think of a specific title. Evil Dead. Fair enough. Well, that makes sense because it's gory. Yeah, it's nasty. Uh, yeah, 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 and it's on well, video. <laughs> So it's a term that was used in the UK to refer to typically low budget horror and exploitation films Mm -hmm. that were specifically distributed on video cassette because those weren't, um, weren't widely available. Yeah. So it was like a loophole in film classification. So you didn't have to go through like the review process. So they didn't have to give it a rating. No, it was on tape. It was on tape. Yeah. So, um, it, yeah, yeah, I saw tons of stuff like that. This movie was banned in the UK until January of 1994, where eventually it passed with an 18 rating. What? Yeah. The fuck? Really? Yeah. Where they, I've seen far worse yeah. stuff that gets a rating. Of course. 
But um, they took out a minute and 41 seconds worth of gore. Um, huh. The the biker castration was removed. Oh, okay. And the that part uh, where the intestines, like the students' intestines are like coming out. They removed oh, that stuff. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, yeah, you like that's near the end with the slow mo thing. It rips the intestines out, starts swinging them around. Yeah. Like, then, yeah. It was really good. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. It was really good. Yeah. But yeah, but eventually, yeah, it was actually released. So Criterion needs to get on. No. This. No. Dig up, get some interviews, <laughs> talk to folk. Like if they're still alive, obviously. Like I get actually am a little bit curious to hear like what this director's background was like. You know, like was it. Because it had money put into it. There's a lot of folk in this movie. And some mm. of the people in this movie, not a lot of them, maybe mm. only just a handful, like actually did go on to act in more films. Yeah. Well, Ryan, this, yeah. would you recommend this movie? Yeah. I mean, if you like this sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. It's bloody funny. It's really funny. I should have watched it with you. Now, I think yeah, that's I so. the thing about this type of film, this film in particular. Watch it with your friends. It needs to be in like, uh, yeah, you need to kind of be in the mood for it. We kind of look at it, we looked at it like with a very analytical eye. And I guess that's when you start to fall asleep a little bit. Yeah, I was not in the mood for this. And like, I <laughs> apparently I've seen it before and I don't remember. There are funny things like... I was on Skype with you, Ryan, while you were uh-huh. watching it, and I had to turn yeah. the volume down because it was so fucking loud. Well, here's, so, here's again, the Again, the screaming and the screeching. I will recommend this movie up to 30 minutes and 58 seconds where you see the the motorcyclist dick get ripped off. But well, it's fine, though, because the professor who tells the turn story turns into a dark man. That's what happens. Because oh, most shit. of his face is fucking burnt off from the, That's true. From the stove, so he turns him into a dark man. They didn't have the money to put that cool makeup on him to be like Liam Neeson. Hey, look, all you need is some bandages. All right, that's all that we needed. So what would you, what did you rate this movie? Oh, you rated, you already said you rated it five stars on Letterboxd. Five stars. It's funny. Jesus Christ. It's fucking funny. I think it's worthy of a two, so at least I'll give it a two. The extra half stars for the wiener. We have seen far worse. Far worse films on this podcast as well. I disagree with that. Uh, Almost everything we have watched for this podcast have been amazing oh so you're saying in the cuts better than this yes fuck no it what absolutely sort of is. world are you in rough world yeah exactly all you in the cut apologists out there <laughs> hang your head in shame no it was worth it fool watch in the cut any day Ugh. well maybe not every day right. no yeah, i guess you wouldn't no plus good luck watching it after i throw it in the bin okay well then what what would you rate your visibility and context, penis wise. I mean, it's right there, so it's a five star. I'm assuming. Wow. It's not a prosthetic. Right. Because it cuts away. All I'm like, I mean, I can just <laughs> imagine what's <laughs> happening in that scene. And it's like, all right, uh, Derek. Let's just say his name's Derek. It's like Derek. His name's um, Rob. Oh, his name's Rob. Yeah, fuck Rob. Rob. Rob Champ. Camp. Oh, Camp. Why is it Camp? C H A M P. Oh, Camp. It's Champ. Rob Champ is what it is in the credit. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, well, then they spelled it wrong yeah. somewhere. So, either way, um, Rob, like, Rob. So, like, Jeff's going to, like, jump out the bush and he's going to immediately go for your dick. So, just just wait. And then he's just, he j- genuinely gets a massive handful. Yeah. Like, you see everything. <laughs> and it does, it does cut, it does cut away. Yeah. So it might not it might not be real, but I like to think that it's definitely. I do not think that this film had the budget in order to employ a prosthetic penis. They put all their money in Bigfoot, and that was it. Yeah. All right. Okay. They didn't have enough money to to make his chest hairy, but they, you know. Well, remember he's a hybrid. One of these days, I'm going to go through Laura's master class of of penis in popular cinema. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing here, but like, right. Yeah. Penises on film. We need to actually get into popular cinema first. I think. No, that's true. This certainly isn't that, No, but like this penis goes into maybe the category of, I don't know if there's a category for like horror penises or like, like like melodramatic penises, maybe necessarily like it's a shock value penis. Uh It's not a comedic penis. Is this for your novel? Well, no, it'll be, 
like an actual, like I'm going to write um, articles about it. I'm going to be real based oh, okay. in fact. Cool. Because I have a master's degree in penises. Okay. And, but I think that this is more like the melodramatic use, like something where like, like in the crying game, you know what I mean? Mm. Where it's like used for shock value. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very completely um, different, obviously. But like, I'm trying to think of where you would put um, this penis in the, in the category because yeah, it is essentially there for shock value. Yeah. This is like fun horror dick. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's, but it's great. It's a creative death Mm -hmm. that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. For Rob. I think I, I think I would give that a, um, like a four. Okay. Or three and a half. I mean, it's daylight. So, yeah, not bad. Yeah, don't let the 320p quality on the YouTube video distract you from the fact that that's, you know, (laughs) that's exactly what it is. Um, Yeah, okay. All right. So. Well, gosh, thank you, Ryan, so much for being here with me today. That's not a problem. Make sure everyone to rate, review, subscribe. It helps so much. It really does. Um, Yeah. It's, yeah, we need to get it out there. Boys yeah. and girls. Plus, everybody. we've got a lot more. We've got a lot more coming up this this October because October month is our spooky sp- penis month. It's, That's it's, the working title. <laughs> yeah, Halloween is what I would have said. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we'll be covering horror movies in October. Yeah, we started on such a week to where we get three horror movies in this month. So we'll have two more. Yeah. For the month of October. Very lucky. Yes. Aren't we very lucky? Aren't we lucky? So watch out for that. We'll be dropping the names of those episodes uh, the week before. Dropping scary bombs. So make sure to follow us on Instagram. And if I get better at Twitter on there, too. (laughs) That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, I'll leave you all the social media nonsense (laughs) Uh, i'm just here to tell jokes yeah and if anyone has any tips we probably won't do those movies but like send us in your favorite horror movie penises on on instagram i'd love to see it yeah i want to see what everyone's favorite horror movie penis is yeah there's a few there's there are quite a few um so we've just done a small selection Mm -hmm. but we'll do more next year of course yeah well Coming to you from Crazy Wanda's Cabin in the Forest. Yeah. That's right. (laughs) I've been Laura. I was trying to be like Crazy Wanda. She doesn't talk. You see? (laughs) Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm Ryan. I'm I'm, I'm here. I'm fine. You'll be okay. Better. I'm not even joking. We are fucking getting a deadbolt for the front door and probably getting weapons. Because I do not swamp ass, like, coming up to the fucking door. Ape. Oh, ape. I'm calling him swamp ass now. Thanks, guys, for being here. Um, protect yourselves from swamp ape or Bigfoot or Yeti or whatever cryptid haunts your region of the world. And uh, we will see you next time. See you soon. Oh, spooky oh, Spooky voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Turn it off. He's coming. He's coming.